I started off in New Ross uh, RFC down in the, the south of Wexford, so I would have probably been thrown out there at quite a young age. My father was involved, he played for a good few years in the club and then he kind of got involved coaching underage teams so I was kind of brought along and kicking the ball on the sideline. I suppose my mother was probably sick of looking after me at that stage so he just brought me along to keep me busy. I was from there really, we used to go in on, on a mart on a, a Saturday or Sunday and I suppose from that age of four or five you were kind of just thrown out with the under eights and, and led them at it so it's probably uh, it's where it all started. My father is a farmer, my mother's a teacher. I'm from Wexford in Ireland, so I don't know if you want to imagine like that's Ireland kind of ish. It, this is Dublin, which a lot of people know. Wexford's down the very southeast of it, so I suppose it was a normal upbringing for me. Really, played a lot of you know obviously rugby in the winter, played a lot of Gaelic games and, and GA in the summer, and I always watched a lot of you know uh, Irish rugby games, particularly. Um, Lion series and stuff like that, and I suppose you had certain players that you always wanted to emulate. But yeah, like it's a dream. It's a dream to, to play rugby as a profession and you know go on another Lion store. There's two forms of pathway in Ireland, really. It's where the school system, the club system, and I would have came through the perceived less traditional model of the the club system. So when I was 17, 18, leaving, 17, leaving school, you're kind of getting picked up by Leinster into the, you know, the sub-academy, academy kind of stages. And you still didn't know then if you're going to make it or not because you never seen how good the schools fellas were your age and stuff like that. So the big eye opener was playing the under 20s World Cup and seeing that you could, or you'd like to think that you could mix at that age and, and at that level. And I suppose from then really that you really start going for it or understand that you can make that step. Sort of larger life, you had this great personality at under 20. So I used to nickname him the Mayor of Wexford. In the World Cup, I used to give the boys prizes. And for the third game running, Ty Furlong won tackle of the day. And so I, I said, Boys, you know, here's the winner, it's the Mayor of Wexford, and here's the clip. And I showed the clip of the tackle, you know, massive big hit. Boys gave him a round of applause, and Ty put his hand up and said, Mike, uh, would you please stop calling me the Mayor of Wexford? He said, just call me the jukebox. I said, why the jukebox? He said, well, the hits keep coming. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just class. And it's very hard to describe why or how, or I think it's, it's not only for the players, but the backroom staff, the coaches. I think everyone understands how special it is. And it's the history as much as anything, really. There's not a lot of people have worn the jersey and there's so many iconic, you know, tour moments that you see over and over again in, in, in line cycles and it's just the bringing together and the challenge of it uh, and just how unique it is. That's an advertisement. Let's pass this jersey now to the next generation, the next four years, off the back of back-to-back -back test series win and we set this team's name in stone in line history forever. Like I think the New Ross Rugby Club, the start they gave me, the friends I've made there, you know, what to give to, you know, from a social aspect to our family as well. So, you know, they're proud rugby people in that part of, of, uh, of the world. So, um, I hope they enjoy it and I hope we make them proud. Yeah.